Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at an Alessis and the model number is RA300 and this is a studio power amplifier. I'll put a link in the description for the video below where you'll see a repair tutorial for the RA150 and also for the RA500 just for your own reference. So this amplifier is no longer available but they were sold in good numbers and they probably appear in the workshop on quite a regular basis and overall construction and build quality is good, nice steel construction, uh, limited use of plastic apart from of course like the front fascia and your connections on the rear. And then in terms of general specifications, power output RMS is 150 watts per channel and that's if you connect to 4 ohm speaker load and then this will reduce down to 90 watts per channel if you're connecting 8 ohm speakers and then if you turn the amplifier around you'll see that there is a switch where you can select between stereo mode and then bridge. So if you're going to go to bridge mode that will increase to 300 hence the RA300 reference but that's a single output and that will go into an 8 ohm speaker load. And then signal to noise ratio greater than 105 dB and frequency response is 10 Hz to 70 kHz and then the total harmonic distortion over the frequency range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz with a 4 ohm connected load is coming in at 0.02%. And then output offset, plus or minus 50 millivolts. And the amplifier has a servo circuit inside for both channels. So that just means that it's actually monitoring the DC offset on the output terminals for the speaker. And then it then provides a feedback network then to adjust that to make sure that it's within that tolerance. Because it's a power amplifier, it's also having inputs which can be quarter jack and then also are balanced or unbalanced and you also have RCA phone and connectors as well. This is very common and you see this on the other series of amplifiers. And then the connection to the rear, you have terminal posts and these are 4mm supported banana jacks. And then power input, this is selectable on the rear. What you will notice is that there's no cover plate over the selection switch. I've not come across any amplifiers which have inadvertently been selected to the wrong voltage but just be aware of it, it's just a simple slide switch. And then rack design is 2U, so it's a 19 inch. So as you can see from the photograph here, you can have it freestanding, it has rubber feet on the underneath of the amplifier, or if you wish, you can remove them and then put it into a 19 inch rack and then fix it in place via the fins either side with locking bolts. And then overall dimensions, you're looking at a height of 99 millimeters with an overall width of 480 and then a depth of 270 millimeters and then the weight for the amplifier is 8.6 kilograms. Now this amplifier when it came into the workshop had a typical fault which I'll sort of get into in a moment but the first thing that I'm going to show you is just with the top of the amplifier with the top cover plate removed and what you can see is that there is a very common thing that we see in many amplifiers heavy coating of dust and this dust falls through the vent grills on the top of the amplifier and this is perfectly normal, you know, nothing to be uh, unexpected. But what it does tell you is that the amplifier has probably never been opened since it was purchased. And what I'd also say as well is that this amplifier didn't appear to have extensive usage. And what I'm referring to is that particularly on the power supply board, there are resistors on that board which can discolour and almost sort of from a colour coding point of view, you know, be unidentifiable. And that means that the amplifier has extended use here. Not the case, but we do have an issue which I'll go into, which is age related. So the first step, of course, is to remove all of that dust if, with a compressed air line, also a stiff brush as well. And then as you remove, for example, the power supply board to work on it, you can get to the underneath of the amplifier internals and then brush all of that out. Once that had been done, the attention was paid to the issue. So I knew already that this amplifier, for example, didn't blow the rear mains protection fuse. So it wasn't drawing any excess current. So it was OK to power it up just via the dim bulb tester, just to do an initial check on what the fault conditions were. Once the amplifier was powered, you did hear the speaker protection relay change over. And that's a little bit unusual. Often when they come into the workshop, this series of amplifiers, you find that the speaker selection relay coil has gone open circuit, but not in this case. But what you did find is the volume control potentiometers, and again, this is common, 
were loose so they're not fixed in place and a lot of play around them and then cosmetically the amplifier didn't appear to have any sort of physical damage or anything like that but what you did notice is that if you adjusted the volume control left or right you had this intermittent loss of sound and to a large degree I'd say noise on the channels as well and a level of distortion. So you can see here in the photograph that the amplifier uses a conventional EI type transformer. It's not using the toroidal type. And sometimes on these amplifiers, if they're quite old, you can get some noise which is being generated from the laminates of the transformer where they vibrate. You can in some cases sort of rectify this just by putting some small amounts of rubber in between the overall sort of covering of the transformer and just keeping them in place with silicon bonding compound but sometimes it's not possible and all you can do is look to replace the transformer but it's often down to the user and the environment that it's in you may find some users find it a little bit irritating if it's a little bit noisy other users probably report nothing at all what I'm showing you next is the front fascia of the amplifier so what I want to sort of get out of the way is certain things which are applicable when you're doing the disassembly of the amplifier before I get onto the electronic side and the repair because the user control potentiometers on the front were loose commonly what people attempt to do is just to take a flat blade screwdriver and work from the front and try and lever off these control knobs if you try and do that what you'll find is you'll damage the control knob you might even damage the potentiometer but you'll certainly damage the fascia so what I'm showing you is that if you remove the front bezel and this is dead easy to do you just have these allen key or allen screws left and right there's four of them in total and then just carefully unclip the amplifier from the metal chassis and what you're seeing here is that there are holes so if you want to remove the knobs as we did in this case because we need to tighten up the user potentiometers just take a flat blade screwdriver just a small terminal driver and then you can just push from the rear through this hole and it's very easy then to remove the knobs and then get use an adjustable spanner or a fixed size spanner to lock back in place the potentiometers now what you'll find as is the case with pretty much all potentiometers they have a locating peg and that just goes through the plastic material and keeps it in position to keep it in this horizontal axis at the same time what I also did was to clean the potentiometers up with the oxide. So it's a case of just spraying it in onto the carbon track and then rotating the potentiometer backwards and forwards many, many times until the carbon track is clear. What you'll find with these potentiometers is there are what we call dent type. So this is a 41 dent type. So as you rotate them, you have this indexing or this clicking sound. And that's really a nice tactile feedback to the user. And you find them often on power amplifiers. Once that was done, you can also see now in the photograph, this is the display window which is used for the VU meters for the amp. Now, what they do during manufacturing, it's a bit of a low cost sort of method and, and pr probably questionable, but you know they don't make the amplifier anymore. What they have is just plastic pegs which are part of the molding. And then when they put the viewing window in there, during production, someone takes something like a hot melt device and they just melt the plastic to hold it in position over time the plastic becomes brittle and just breaks away so what you have to do is to take on some repair work to try and rectify this and rather than trying to rebond it you know trying to melt the plastic and causing damage the best thing to do here is just use a two-part epoxy resin so for me I just have a quick set type and I work on the fascia before I worked on the electronics so once I've put a number of dabs of the epoxy in place you'll find that that's held rigid. So let's sort of look at what we found with this amplifier. The next thing that I'm sort of bringing to your attention is the main power supply board. Um, we're looking at this from the top. Um, what you can see is the bigger protection relay, which is towards the rear of the board, and then towards the near part, towards the front, what you'll see is the main power supply components. And there's multiple power supplies in here. So for example, you have the 12 volt power supply. You also have a plus and minus 15 volt power supply. And then also the main power rails, which are used for the power output stage for the amp. Now to remove it, it's very easy. What you have is a series of fixing screws from the top of the board, but you will need to remove the fixing screw and nut and associated washers 
for the bridge rectifier and underneath the bridge rectifier you'll see that there is heat sink compound and as with this amplifier and what you find is quite common is that it just dries out over time and it becomes quite powdered so when you do the reassembly or refitting of the board just make sure that you put some new heat sink transfer compound just to make the thermal transfer of heat from the bridge rectifier more efficient and hopefully provide you know a lot more longevity to it now once I've removed that circuit board you will need of course to disconnect the multi-pin connectors from the left and right channels both the power and also you have the multi-pin connectors which are bringing in the sense circuit to detect if there's any issues for example high DC which feed and directly connect to the speaker protection circuits you will need to remove the multi-pin connectors at the rear which are just push on terminals you'll be able to just lift up the circuit board um, what you can see on the bottom and what I've circled here is there are a series of capacitors both for the plus or minus 15 volt supply and the 12 volt supply and in terms of design they're mounted very very close to power compliance both resistors and regulation transistors as well now often if you're doing fault finding you will look for a capacitor to have some telltale signs and the most common one is that you look from the top of the capacitor and it appears to be bulging so you know that it's venting internally um, it could have a high ESR or maybe it's failed open circuit with this amplifier and is the case with other types of amplifiers you don't always see that kind of symptom so when you look from a physical point of view it's not leading you anywhere so what you need to do is to remove the capacitor or the capacitors and then test them you know with an ESR meter I'm also showing you as well next the underneath of the circuit board for the power supply stroke speaker protection board and the reason why I'm doing that is because you have power components you have a series of dry solder joints which always form so best practice is to reflow the solder joints on that circuit board to avoid any future issues so once that work was carried out and now what I'm showing you is the circuit schematic which is for the power supply and speaker protection board now I mentioned earlier about the speaker protection relay and the common issue that the relay goes open circuit or very high resistance on the coil this amplifier didn't have that but as a matter of course I did replace the relay and you may say well what type is it and I'll put it in the description for the video but the coil is 12 volts DC and it is a double pole so two contacts one for the left and one for the right output channels change over relay and very very common the G2 type because we were losing intermittent sound that would also be linked to oxidization on the relay contacts so you should always replace the relay in this series of amplifiers irrespective of if the relay is failed open and you'll know straight away if you have such a fault that you just disconnect the power to the left and the right channel power modules and then when you power up the amplifier after about five seconds you should hear an audible click as the relay changes over if it doesn't change over that tells you that in most cases it will definitely be due to the relay coil going open so I just replace it here because it was oxidized and just to prevent no future failure I'll show you a little bit later on in the video you will see the relay when it's been removed and the particular brand which is the troublesome brand and it was used extensively in all of these amps so what you see with this amplifier and what was linked to the noise was the failure of the electrolytic capacitors in both the plus and minus 15 volt supplies and remember that these will also provide power to the operational amplifiers on the pre-amplifier stage for the power output modules and other parts of the circuit within the amp so the AC of course was being rectified at 100 Hertz and then there was no smoothing taking place so you had all of this ripple arriving into some of the uh, signal processing circuits and then you also had the same issue with the 12 volt supply as well any of these series of amplifiers be it the 150, 300 or 500 that you get in the workshop or you're looking to fault find you have to go do this work on this board and that will fix virtually all the issues I have had a amplifiers come in where there's been an issue maybe on the driver board for one of the respective channels or maybe one of the output channels has failed but if I took like an example it's 9 out of 10 amps that come in 
have got this issue that I'm describing to you here. Once those capacitors were replaced, when you powered up the amplifier during the initial test phase, what you also found was that the LED on the front, which should be blue, was not illuminated. And that can be a little bit confusing for the customer because of course you need some form of power indication, but no illumination at all. And the reason for that, and what I'm now showing you, is that you have the circuit board removed, and again this is held in place by two fixing screws, and this is referred to as the power meter board. And I'm showing you here um, the circuit board removed, and you have multiple LEDs on there which are for the VU meters, and then you also have a single LED which is 5 millimeters by 2 millimeters. So it's a rectangular LED, not a circular type or round type, and it was open circuit. And again, this is very, very common. I've seen this issue on pretty much all of the RAC amplifiers that come into the workshop. So before we sort of get into that part of it, what I want to sort of highlight, you could take time then to go fault find and then to test the DC voltage for the power LED, but all that you need to do is just to remove it and you can then test it with your multimeter to see if it's open circuit or you can just remove it and then if you just check for the DC voltage it will be present and that's coming from this 12 volt supply. So here with the circuit schematic you can see that I'm making the reference to the power indication LED and its LED on or its reference there is LD23 and it's a simple case of just replacing the LED to fix the problem. So once that was done, and then the board was then reinstalled into the amplifier, and a full functional check was made, and there was no issues in terms of distortion, no issues with related to noise, and you could run the amplifier pretty much at full power on both channels operating in stereo mode, or just operating up to about 280 watts in bridge mode, and there was no loss of audio whatsoever. So in terms of sort of encompassing all that was done on this amp of course you had the issues relating to the volume control potentiometers being loose but remember that that cleaning of those potentiometers can also apply where you get this intermittent loss of sound if the track or the carbon track is dirty when you rotate it you could hit a dirty part on the track and then you lose the, the sound so by cleaning them up with deoxid then that eliminates that issue most potentiometers can be cleaned, but sometimes you come across the situation where they cannot, and then the only thing that you can do is to replace it. And then the other thing, which of course is associated with intermittent loss of sound, is the speaker protection relay, where the contacts become heavily oxidized. Some relays are sealed, so you can't remove the tap cover of them to try and get any access to clean them. Others, then you can. But this relay for this 300 series, it's the same one used in the 150 and then also the 500. The switching contacts are rated at 10 amps, which is a little bit high. You know, you can get away with a, a lower current rating speaker protection relay, but you know, once that has been replaced, then you've effectively taken care of two major issues which are associated with this loss of sound there. So, as I said, once the amplifier had gone full, full checkup and full operation, you know, working perfectly. Not a complicated repair in this case, but you know these faults are very, very common. So if you are looking to repair any of the Alasis RA series, if you follow this tutorial, and also you look at the links in the video description for the 150 and the 500, if you follow through, then you should be in a position where you can restore the amplifiers back to full operation. And by replacing that speaker protection relay, you eliminate any of the sort of issues associated where the a relay coil can go open circuit. So that sort of brings us to the end of this tutorial. So I appreciate you stopping by as always and I would say thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or any concerns and you need more information, then email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com or just leave a message just in the chat and I'll respond back to you normally the same day. So until the next time I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.